ChatGPT is not the best AI coding assistant out there. And in this video, I would like to demonstrate a alternative AI coding assistant that can help you create Blender Python scripts and add-ons faster. I'll show you some of the cool features and tell you how you can set this up for yourself. Let's dive into the code. Here I have Visual Studio Code running and it has some add-on code right here. And I have Blender 4.1 running next to it. I've connected Visual Studio Code using the Blender development extension to this Blender instance. This allows me to edit my add-on code and reload it in Blender. Now let's open up the AI Assistant tab. It's right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and ask it to explain this code for me. And as soon as I do that, it starts thinking about what this code is and starts explaining what is going on in the code without me actually have, having to read through it and understand it. And you can see there's a really nice explanation. You can just read through all of this. Basically, the main idea here is that we're creating a Pi menu that allows us to select and delete elements from the scene. So right here we have a, a shortcut that's defined, so E and then Alt. You can see that it's explaining that that shortcut right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna press Alt E and you can see that I have the select all and delete. Uh, this is exactly what's going on in this operator right here. Now that we understand what this code does, I wanna add an operator to add a cube into the scene and I'll go ahead and ask it right in the chat. So I'm writing create a Blender Python operator that will add a cube into the scene. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. Okay, it has finished generating. Here's this simple operator and it, as you can see, if, or the execute, it adds this uh, cube, right? Inside of the execute method, you can see that it calls the primitive cube add, which adds the cube into the scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this code right here and there's a really nice button and insert add cursor. Now, uh, I don't really need uh, this right here. I'll just go ahead and copy the register down here, paste that, and paste that. So I'll go ahead and remove this, and I'll remove that. Okay, we've added this operator, but it's not part of the Pi menu that we're creating. I'm going to go and go into the draw uh, part of the UI layout of this Pi menu, and I'm gonna go ahead and press enter. And right away, this AI assistant is giving me the line that is filled out for me in gray. You can see it's uh, telling me that I should just add layout operator, object simple operator. Notice that that's exactly this name right here, the thing that we just added, and it actually knows that we're adding a cube. I'm gonna go ahead and just press tab to apply it and look at that this this is way better than any autocomplete i have personally ever seen i'm going to go ahead and save this add-on and i'm going to go ahead and reload it and send it over to the blender that's running i'm going to select reload add-ons and now when i press alt e you can see that i have this add cube option let me go ahead and select everything and then i'm going to delete Right, so nothing is in the scene, and I'm gonna, again, hit Alt-E. I can't actually click on this. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Well, uh, I can see this pull method right here, and it actually require, it's actually requiring me that I need an active object selected. I don't really need this. Um, I could just set this to is none, so no active object is selected, and only then it will allow me to execute this uh, operator. I'm gonna go ahead and save it, reload it, now I can add this cube. I'm gonna click that. And now we have a cube in the scene. Next, let's add an operator that will add an icosphere into the scene. And you can see it generated uh, the code. It's uh, pretty similar to what we have before, right? So I'm gonna again, just insert it right here like that. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the menu. Again, it's giving me the option right away, right? Just, I'm gonna press tab. And instead of copying and pasting the registration, I'll go ahead and just hit enter. And it actually knows that I'm gonna be registering it, right? It's pretty cool. Uh, and let me deregister it as well, like that. So we have our operator, we have registered, deregistered it, 
and also add it into our Pi menu. Let me go ahead and save this and reload the add-ons. And let's remove everything from the scene. And let's go ahead and add that icosphere like that. And you can see how fast it was to create this code with this AI assistant. And I wanted to share another code example with you. This is a Blender Python script that creates a light rig setup. And instead of asking it to explain this code, I'm going to ask it to comment every single line and this way understand what this code does. And I'm going to go ahead and select all the code and press control I and then ask it to add comments on every line explaining what each line does. And you can see this is pretty accurate. Uh, it, it's explaining what each line does. And this will, this is great for anyone who has confused about a particular part of the code and wants to understand line by line what something does. Right, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and accept it, right? And here you got all those comments generated right there. I'm going to go ahead and undo that because it's pretty wordy. And the next thing that I wanted to show you is splitting this code into separate functions. Something that is commonly done when you want to organize your code better, reuse it, is adding, adding functions into your code. I'm going to go ahead and select everything. Again, press Control I, and I'm going to request to update the code with functions. And it generated all those functions. It actually probably split them up more than I would like, but uh, I can work with that. Uh, you can see that it's created a main function and split up the different parts of, of the functionality into separate functions. I'm going to hit accept and let's go ahead and save that. I'm going to actually remove this part because the Blender, um, Blender development extension that I'm using doesn't support that. I'm going to save that and let's go ahead and run the script. And you can see that the script executed and at, it's cre it created an empty that controls the location of all of the spotlights. And I think there's another uh, tracker, the, another empty that uh, the spotlights are tracking. Yeah, that looks like the script was updated and it still works. The name of this AI coding assistant is GetUp Copilot. I'm not in any way sponsored by GitHub. I just really like using it for my personal projects and I wanted to share this with you. If you want to set this up for yourself, you'll need to have a GitHub account. So make sure to register with GitHub. After that, you can start your free trial with GitHub Copilot. You'll also need Visual Studio Code installed. I have a separate video explaining how you can set up Visual Studio Code to work with Blender. After you have that installed, you'll need to also install the extension for GitHub Copilot, log in with your GitHub account, and that will allow you to use this amazing AI coding assistant. GitHub Copilot is actually based on GPT-4. You can think of it as ChatGPT, but really tailored for the coding problems. Now you can still do a lot of cool stuff with ChatGPT. And in this video right here, I'm going to try to restore an old add-on that doesn't work in the latest release of Blender. 